Okay, this tutorial is going to give you a walkthrough of the Random Bugs Lab. It's 3.7 in our book. And the setup files for this, uh, you can download from the AP website and the textbook website. You should have three things. That's the Grid World code, which I have here on the desktop, the student files from the textbook, and a copy of the Grid World student manual, which I handed out in class. So if you don't have those three things, here's how you get them. On the AP central.collegeboard website or you can just google grid world case study and the first link is the code and then the second link is the student manual which that's this handout from class so I have both of those ready to go on my desktop here those two and then the third thing which is the textbook files you can get from our textbook website Java methods uh, it's located at www.skylit.com backslash discs.html. So the student files are located right here. Just click on this link. It will download down here, and you just dis extract the file to your desktop or to your H drive or wherever you want to save it. All right, so then we're just going to fire up Eclipse, and then I'm going to start a new Java project. I'm going to call this Random Bugs and click finish. I'm then I'm going to import those files that are necessary to this project and this is all going to be um, on pages 68 and 69 for you in the textbook. So I'm going to click file system, next, browse, and then I'm going to get the grid world code first, select it all, click finish, and then I'm also going to import the chapter 3 grid world stuff from our textbook. So file system, next, Browse, I have this uh, located here, it's under Chapter 3, and Grid World. The only file that we really need is the U-turn bug.java, so I'm going to click Finish. And then we're going to set the build path for this project. So I'm going to click Properties, Build Path, Library, and then Add the Jar. I'm moving quickly here because we've done this in class already, so I'm going to click OK. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these files into the source. So I'm going to select all of these, click Copy. Um, so here's Copy. And then I'm going to paste a copy in here. That way I can retain the originals while I still have them in my source folder. And then the same thing for U-turn. I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to paste it. That way, if I do need to start the project over for whatever reason, it's just a good practice to have the originals ready to go. So then they wanted you to review um, box runner, box bug, and I might as well bring up U-turn and just give these a quick review uh, before we move forward on what each one does. So I'm going to close box bug for now. And then the next thing that they want us to do is we want to take everything in U-turn and copy it. So I'm going to control A to select everything and control C to copy it. And then I'm going to close it. Then I'm going to create a new class. So I'm going to click File, New, Class. And this new class is going to be called Random Bugs. Or Random Bug and it should extend bugs. I'm going to click Finish, and here's the empty one. I'm going to cop basically uh, type over top of this. So I just selected that. I'm going to push Control v and then I just need to rename a few things. I need to have this the same as the file name, so the class header will be Random Bug, and it should extend bug. And then I'm just going to copy this, and then I'm going to change these default constructors to random bug as well so they match. I'm going to go ahead and save it right now. All right, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm on step two, replace the turn around method with a turn angle method. So that's a little bit further down here, and they give you a clue. They say use U turn's code as a prototype for setting the direction of the bug, which is right here. So that's what we're going to keep. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take out this. And I'm actually just going to move the turn method. I'm going to cut that and just put it next. Then I'm going to change uh, the name of this to turn int 
angle. So it will accept a parameter that's an integer of an angle. And I'm going to change the 180 because that was the, formerly it was the uh, turnaround method. Now we're going to have it turn at an angle, which is yet to be determined. All right, so let's go ahead and read step three. Step three, modify the act method to make the bug move if it can. Then the bug should turn at a random angle, uh, by a random angle, which is a multiple of 45, or the same thing, simply turn in a random direction. So the statement int angle equals 45 times the integer value of math, and math is a class, dot random times 8. They go on to say here that don't worry about the math.random class until chapter 6. So for now, we're just going to take them at their word and just keep moving on. So what they want us to do down here is they want us to do to edit this. So if we, um, right above here, we can add int angle equals 45. So we're gonna, it's going to be a multiple of 45 times. The integer value of math dot random times eight. And then down here we're gonna say turn at angle. Alright, so now it will move if it can, and if it can't, it's gonna turn at an, at a random angle, which is an interval of forty-five. All right, the last thing that I'm going to do is we're going to make some random bugs. So in step number four, copy bugrunner.java into random bugrunner.java and change the class's name in the class header and edit the main method to add a couple of random bug objects to the world. All right, so that's quite a bit, but basically all we have to do here is we're just going to copy this. I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to add a new class, a file new class, and it's going to be called random bug runner. So random bug runner. And I'm going to click finish. So here it is. I'm going to cop paste in the uh, previous code. And what I'm going to need to change here is this is going to be random bug runner. And they want us to take, uh, we don't want regular bugs, we want random bugs. So I'm going to go ahead and change some of these. And I'm going to create a new instance of random bug. All right, so we want a, a variable here, a new instance bug. So I'm going to call this first one 1. Um, or I can just call it bug1 equals new random bug parentheses and a semicolon. So that's a new instance of the random bug. I'm going to create two more just so we can have a couple of bugs on the screen here and just change bug one to bug two and bug three. So we'll change Alice here to bug two so that'll be orange and we'll make bug three uh, red. All right, now we have to add them to the world. So basically, bug one is the default color. I think that's yellow. And then bug two is going to be orange. Bug three will be red. And then we're going to add them to the world itself. So that's what this section does. So we'll add uh, bug one at location seven, eight. Those are the coordinates, and then bug two, and then uh, we're going to need to add a third bug. So I'll copy this line, paste it down below, and we can't have them at the same coordinates, so they'll be on top of one another. So I'll say coordinate one, two, and then this is bug three. All right, so now we have everything we need to go ahead and run it, so let's go see what it does. All right, here's our three bugs, yellow, red, and kind of an orange. Um, and let's go ahead and, oh, I did, did have a mistake here. I forgot to change bug two to bug three. All right, so let's go ahead and push play. There, that's more orange. All right, so let's go ahead and 
we'll change up the speed and click run and there they are they're going in random directions all right so that's lab 3.7 you can now go on to exercises two and three